Welcome to Align to Your Design. I'm your host, Beth Davis. Isn't it time to wrap your business around your purpose and bring your greatest work to the world? Each week, join me as we explore various biometric tools, such as human design and hand analysis, and how to use them to fulfill your destiny and align to your design. We will reveal how to do the work you are designed to do, rather than what you think you should do. Welcome again to Align to Your Design. And this is the podcast where I interview people who are living their purpose, they're aligned to their design, and they're at that place in their life where in sharing their gifts, they're awakening to the magic available here on Mother Earth when you're connected to yourself and connected to the earth and connected to divinity. And our guest today and I, we are going to talk about three keys to navigate chaos and create your wondrous future because there is a lot of chaos going on right now. I'm a dancer trained in the five rhythms method. If you don't know what it is, you can look it up. And it was created by Gabriel Roth and it deals with the five rhythms of the ocean. And so there are five rhythms there and they go in a circle like a, like a wave, like spiral dynamics. There's flow when the, the water comes in and then it gets a little choppy, that's staccato. And then there's chaos as the, as the wave is cresting. And then there's this lyrical kind of dance back. And then there's the pause known as stillness, essentially. You're pausing. You may not be totally still when you pause. But that's the flow of life, right? So there's a flow, there's some woo, turbulent water, woo, and then chaos. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then dancing like a ballerina and then take a break. And it starts all over again. So chaos is right in the middle. It's the middle between the binary because there's always some between opposites. So you have two opposites. You have flow, you have pause and they're right next to each other but they're apart because of this that connects them, right? So you pause and then another flow starts. You see how that works? They're right next to each other. But what happens in between is the rainbow of experience. You're gonna have chaos. I mean, staccato, you're gonna have, you know, conflict, arguments, whatever. And then chaos, woo, you're just gonna hang on, chaos. Put your seatbelt on, ride the energy, ride it out, spin with the music, don't resist it, flip that head, move that hair, move those arms, move that body, spin, spin, spin like a dervish. And then you're like, oh, and you're in your body from the chaos. And then you can have ballerina hands and rounded elbows and look good in your point shoes or fly through the air like Mikhail Baryshnikov, whatever you prefer. And then you need to take a break. You got to recover. It's called self-care. Take a nap, get Epsom salt bath, go to get massage, drink some green juice, take it, take another nap, make some money, <laughs> go paint a painting, you see? And you've rested and then ah, new flow, new idea, new, oh, conflict, oh, through the washing machine, spit out, oh, now I can dance. Because lyrical is the hardest, because lyrical is mastery. Most people never get through the chaos, which is right now, what do they do? They die, they leave the planet, they die. They get some stupid disease and they die. And if that triggers you, good, good, it should. I've, I've been subject to many stupid diseases because they come from the collective. They're, not, they're just total overlays of nonsense that holds us back from our purpose. But if we don't know that, we can't, we can't get through the chaos. So my guest today and I are going to look at her process for moving through that rhythm of chaos because she's in lyrical. She lives in lyrical. I live in chaos. Ask anyone. It's organized though. And I'm in control. I spin, but you have to be in control. You have to be in control when you spin or you'll fall down or you'll bump into someone, break their jaw. So it's controlled chaos. It's an art form. Movement is, requires practice, real movement through life. You want to flow. You need to know how to rest, right? You want lyrical. You want to be like my guest, elegant, in control in the right way, not trying to control other people in control of her mastery, you have to know how to navigate chaos and not get thrown off by the news cycle or the price of gas, more nonsense. And honestly, unless you're gonna go to the front lines of a battle, why are you indulging yourself in that information anyway? Help a family, get involved with a charity, do a fundraiser, adopt a, an orphan. You know what I mean? Like do something that you can do. It doesn't get you shot. 
because there's no need for that. All right. So this is the time we're living in. Where this is the time we're living in. So I'm going to briefly tell you about our incredible guest, and then we're going to dive in because we got some time today. And then, of course, at the end of the interview, we are going to look at our guest's human design chart, and her chart is very special. You're going to see she's very unique. She's very unique in many aspects of her design statistically. She's a rare bird on the planet. There's a lot of generators like me. We're the most common type, 37% of us. And, and I have emotional authority, which means I make decisions through my feelings, clarity in my feelings. My life journey as a lesson is emotional mastery. That's my lesson. Bobby didn't have that in her chart. 50% of humanity are emotional types. Bobby is not an emotional type. She's a mental type who reshapes environments to create more beauty, to create more life, to create more lyricism. That's how I see her. She just, she brings out the elegant. She brings out the beauty. She brings out the power that beauty elicits. Beauty and truth are the highest frequencies. When we start judging somebody's Maybach vehicle or their Prada shoes as superficial, you're missing the point. There's such a high vibration in quality goods, very high vibration. Now, if the quality goods are made by slaves, they're not high vibration. And uh, if the quality goods are being acquired by people who are impressed by labels and want to show off to their friends, well, that's not the deepest motive. I don't have a problem with it, though. I don't care if you do that. Who cares? Go ahead and show it off. Be proud of yourself. Go ahead. They'll be jealous. And I suggest be careful with that. But nevertheless, do what you feel. Okay. So what we're going to look at today, we're going to look at two rhythms out of the five rhythms. We're going to look at chaos and how to navigate it, because you're in for, we got a hundred years of this, folks. It just started, and we're not even really into it yet. 2027, it kicks in hard, hard, <laughs> in a good way. There's so much goodness coming, oh, so much abundance for the people who are ready for it. So that's really what my guests and I are going to get into, is how do you navigate the swirling, toppling waves, and then move into a lyrical, elegant, graceful, way of being and knowing I can navigate whatever life throws in me. I can, I can ride those waves. I am a master surfer of life. And once you learn how to be a master surfer, you become a master manifester. So with that, let me tell you about our guest. All right. Our guest today is Bobby Castellino Lewis, and she is a spiritual intuitive style expert and motivator who is hired by confident leaders who need to show up powerfully in the world. Bobby's work has helped clients renew relationships, expand confidence in new directions, and become client magnets. This is totally true. If you've seen any of my recent photos where I look like myself, she had a huge part in what I'm wearing. She's a prolific columnist, author of a soon-to-be-released book, So That's What 70 Looks Like, The Essence of Aging Gracefully. Didn't I say? She's going to show you grace. She's going to show you lyricism. Bobby is a sought after podcast guest, TEDx speaker, stylist. She's the go to stylist for Carrie Murphy's It Factor. So check out Bobby Castellino Lewis and check out Carrie Murphy. Carrie Murphy is a beloved mutual friend of ours as well. Uh, yes, we do business with Carrie, and Carrie is. She's an earth angel like Bobby. You'll see. The earth angels are getting together to bring some angelic loving and healing to the planet. You know, that's what we're here to do. Bobby's also a community leader and a boomer, bridging the gap with millennials. We love millennials. We, you know what, Bobby? We're going to talk about millennials and why we love them because they get a lot of stuff thrown at them that isn't fair. Bobby is fun. Bobby is chic. And Bobby is smart in equal measure. And so are you. So can you be fun, chic, and smart? So with that, let's bring... The inimitable, the gorgeous, the never stopping to amaze me with her creativity, Bobby Castellino Lewis. Welcome to Align to Your Design. All right. This is exciting. I am so excited to have her on the show. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. There we go. Hi. You're on candid camera. Hi. And, and I'm all welled up already. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me what, why, what are you feeling right now after hearing you be reflected to you? Oh my goodness. It was just, I was sitting here just 
davening. <laughs> you know? It's just absolutely davening and I'm so appreciative. So oh, oh, Bobby, it's always a pleasure to interact with you. And I want to say for all the listeners, we both may get a little squeaky, scratchy. I feel like my voice sounds like a teenage boy going through the voice change. <laughs> and it's because it's because when you start up leveling at 5D, 5D is the throat in the body. 5D is sound. It's acoustic. Your sound mutates the world, otherwise your voice, when you are correct. And so Bobby and I have shed uh, most of other people's ideas of who we are. And so we can speak truth. We can speak with our real voice. So Bobby, let's just dive right into our topic. And I, I want to kind of reverse engineer this if it's okay. So feel free to stop me at Yours. any time. Or, Yours. Yeah. So, so as we, you know, cause we want to live in grace, right? We want joy and ease and lyricism and beauty, but we got to deal with all the rhythms. So please let's start with, when you say create your wondrous future, let's start with the, with the vision. What to you is the wondrous future? And I, I, I'll give you my two cents too when we get to that. But let's talk about the future first because that's where we're going. And that creates like the carrot of what's possible. And then let's look at three ways to navigate the current crisis because there's so much chaos and crisis, crisis right now. People are really needing something to look forward to. And um, they need that, Bobby. They need a vision. And tell us what you think. Oh my goodness, this is um, such a hot topic for me. I mean, I live and breathe it kind of all day long lately. And, you know, really, I just look at all the situations in the world and the local dramas and that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, this is such a stupid waste of time. It's so boring. It's boring. It's like the same bullies, you know, on the same playground for centuries. You know, I, Like we haven't learned anything. Like when they hit the girl, in the fourth grade, that's when you stop them, not when they're re leading millions of people to their doom. Right. It's right. absurd. And, you know, and we put them in power instead of saying, you need to go to um, yeah, reform a special school. home <laughs> for mentally disturbed people. I'm sorry, but that's where you're going. And you're, we, hopefully they can help you. We don't know. Yeah. You're going. Just... I mean, that's the truth. We, we literally let psychotic, psychopathic people lead us. I know because the drum I've been banging a lot lately, looking back over history and my own DNA lineage, I'm a Holocaust survivor. My family, very close family. And I, I've always felt that, you yeah. know, I've always felt that. And I look at the Holocaust, I look at, you know, different times in history and the numbers I'm always, everybody says to me, how do you come up with, you know, your ideas on things? I said, I follow the money. Right. If exactly. You follow so the money, if you it follow the sense. money, you'll find, you'll find the impetus. So I keep saying, and I, and I go back to Moses. I go back to, you know, the, what the, the Atlanteans, I mean, yeah. anywhere you want to go in, in the mildly or, you know, unconsciously recorded history is there have always been more oppressed than oppressors. Of course. Yeah. What the heck? Climb out of the mud pits. I know. Come on, people fight back. Stones and take back your power. Oh, they the Russians, this is my prediction. The I, Russians. I, I already don't know what it is, but I'm I'm already sure I agree with you. <laughs> they are also on Ukraine's side because what's going through their head, like any woman in an abusive relationship, or about to be in one, wow. If he treats her like that, what's he going to do to me? His home country. Everybody's worse to the people close to them than strangers. You know that's what, and, and the Russians feel it. Like, oh, he's not going to stop until he burns everything down because he's psychopathic. Well, and he, he's and a scorched earth, no empathy, brain damaged individual who will stop at nothing. He will stop. People cannot underestimate this guy. He will literally stop at nothing unless millions of people rise up and go, no. Yeah. Well, and the problem and is, the army has to. The problem is, is, is the problem is, you know, when you're talking about energy, he incarnated at like 550, which is really high. And he's now down to a hundred. Okay. Yep. He's yeah, a fallen frequency. angel. Okay. Yes, he is. It's he's a fallen obvious. angel. And, and he has no place to go. Nope. And his henchmen all register 20 and below on the, on the Dr. Hawkins shoot, shoot. shoot it's you know. really gruesome. Yeah. They need to be eliminated. I'm sorry. I, well, I, we all know that. Yeah. 
because yeah. they're they're total infected. Yeah, they're not even human at this point. But but I think so sad. The, the David here, uh, Zelensky is he's the David, you know, and uh, yep, and Goliath fighting Goliath. Yeah, yeah, yep, and he will he will be successful. Oh, he will because we're on his side. We're on the side yeah. of the individual yeah. who has a voice. Yeah, that's five D. Five D is you're willing to risk death to speak your truth. So you want to go 5D, everyone, and manifest in the 3D, the world of things? Think you can be an instant manifester? Stop lying to yourself. That's where you start. Yeah. So yeah. Bobby, this wondrous future, we've talked a lot about not wondrous future, what's going on right now, which is just chaos. What do you see in this wondrous future? Let's paint that picture and then look at how to navigate. We've established the chaos. What is the wondrous future according to you? Well, the wondrous future, according to me, is the same way I navigate the chaos. So for me, the wondrous future is a triangle. Triangles are the strongest, the strongest, no matter how you push, they're the strongest structure. Okay, so my personal triangle, which evolved for me after the intervention that you guys, four of you helped me with early in March of 2020, when I when I saw people banging on my door to give me shots, okay? Yep. I reached out to you guys and I said, you have to help me. I am yep. seeing this way too clearly. And I needed a witness. Yep. So what I came up with out of that, and I'm sure with all of your input and you, Joanne, Bamboo, Michelle, and I think that was it, um, <laughs> was I came up with the three pillars of my triangle, the three pillars that will help me keep life clean and simple for me and show me my right from my wrong, mm -hmm. my in from my out. And it's very simple. It's three words, kindness, bravery, and integrity. Mm -hmm. With those, it makes everything so incredibly clear to as to what is discard eligible. That's right. Because do I have control over it? Is it truthful? Is, do I stay in my integrity if I participate or I don't participate or have that conversation or say that or be with that person or go someplace or join an organization? Does it feel like it's an integrity for me? And I take silence because silence is very powerful. I take my time, I pause, and I pause for as long as I need to, to be sure that it's inside my triangle. I will not tolerate People who are unkind will not tolerate it. And if you want my respect, you better be brave. Right. You better be brave. So that's the future I see. I see a world where people are kind, people are brave, and people are living in their integrity. Yeah, with their purpose. With a purpose. Well, yeah. that's what integrity is. You know what your purpose is. And that's then, right. And they're correct. True to it. Yeah. yeah. So I love that, Bobby. Yeah. That's, yeah, and, and it's so possible. It's so very possible. There are so many people that are close. There's close to understanding. There are some people that wanting to understand, you know, and it's just gonna take a little bit more time if they stay with it and they align themselves with the right people and the right thoughts and the right behaviors. You know, so I, I mean, you know, and haven't done much more research, so I don't know what the percentages are of people that are actually going to rise up and people that are going to ascend and all that kind of stuff, because I don't have any control over that. I only know that I am only putting goodness out into the world. Yeah, you only only are same. That's my goal, too. You know, the, the it. it's so funny. Have you been like watching my classes? Because I feel like I just got a like we're on the same mind meld. I've been making this shape. I'm like upper triangle, lower triangle, like for two weeks. So the way I describe it, right. So the, the, from, from, you know, I was raised Catholic, but Christian, basically Protestant and Catholic. So mm -hmm. the upper triangle, father, son, Holy ghost, which scientifically the sun is the star. The father is infinite time and space. And the Holy ghost is all the other dimensions before the 3d. And up to the 11D, matter can still do things. So consciousness can actually exist without a body, good, bad, and ugly, as we know. We're very enamored of the 3D, and then we deny what God is, which I find fascinating. I'm like, well, that's God. What you don't believe in is God. Uh, but all of that got stripped out of our culture. It all got stripped out. And the lower triangle I describe as 
the, the mother, the daughter, and the high priestess. So you have, right, Father God, Trinity, qualities, kindness, integrity, bravery. Because when I think about even, you can apply that to the, to the whole thing, right? So mm -hmm. the, the kindness is consciousness that wants to evolve, right? And the integrity is manifesting through you. And the bravery is pulling the energy up from Mother Earth, right? So, so the, the kindness is coming from divine love. The bravery is coming from the Earth. And then the integrity is you. Yeah. And, you, and know, I, you know, it's you in the middle honoring you. Yeah. And then you can, you can, I mean, play with that. I've been mm -hmm. doing um, a lot of spiritual retreats and um, I don't know if you've read someone by the name of Carolyn Mace. Carolyn Mace. Uh, Carolyn Mace. Mace. I'm here because of Carolyn Mace. Yeah. Let's well, talk about Carolyn Mace. Carolyn Mace one day, I she'll let me kiss her boot. I will kiss her boot. Mm -hmm. I read her book, how people, why people don't heal and how they can. And then, uh, all of her uh, sacred contracts and you know, all her amazing books. Anyway, yes, Carolyn Mace, I read in my 20s and I went, oh, symbolic site, huh? Mm -hmm. And it changed everything. And then I found hand analysis and I found my purpose. It's all because of her. So tell me yeah. your experience so, of Carolyn Mace. It's well, pronounced Mace. 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 Okay. Yep. Well, and have you ever listened to any of her lectures? Are you kidding me? Honey, yeah. okay. I've been following her since I was 25. Yeah, okay. well, it, it's new for me. And I think good, you. good. Yeah. She'll kick your ass right into the truth. Yeah. And I, I really thank Kathy Alessandra because yeah. of her spiritual journey. Uh, I she's Hi, Kathy. Yeah, right. We'll have to tag her. But she's brought me into a spiritual journey. And now we're now we're and then I started once I get onto something, then things come to me. And now we're exploring Mary Magdalene, who was one of the original yeah. disciples, you know, That's right. and, yes, she was. And, and the most trusted of all confidence mm -hmm. and six gospels of hers were removed. So imagine those nasty boys back then. But anyway. I have a painting. I have a painting of Mary Magdalene yeah. from my art teacher who. Anyway, I can show that at the end of the call, but well, yes. my yeah. dear friend, you know, and I'm wearing some of her stuff today. Oh, well, I got it. What's her name again? I Chi Deborah Stewart. I Chi. I just, it's time for me to give my, yeah. Hi Chi. Everyone yeah. check out Hi Chi jewelry. It's freaking gorgeous. Anyway, go on. But uh, now uh, Deborah and I do a lot together, a lot. And, um, and I just adore her from the first minute I laid oh, out. She's an her. angel. Yeah, she is. So now I commanded her <laughs> to make a Mary Magdalene. Charm. I just get chills. And like all the hair standing up in my arms. And uh, all of the goddess, not goddesses, because she already has the goddesses. But she now I've you know asked her to do all of the fairies. Bobby, so, look yeah, at look bracelet. over your head right now. Look at your screen. Oh, yeah, the light. <laughs> no, but look at it. I know. I know. Look at that. It's the windows. It's a no, it's, yeah. but yes, but it's the way it's showing up. Yeah. Is crazy. in your design as you channel light is the six line is up on the it channels, the light, you channel yeah. the light. Yeah. So, so anyway, so those are, those are, those are my two shout outs because it's all linked together. What did you but, learn from Carolyn Mace? Like what stands out? Um, it's just a different type of bravery. I think is probably my first takeaway. So what is that to you? A different kind of bravery? Uh, well, what does that, that mean? I think it's the biggest bravery of all is, um, you know, listening and finding yourself doing the inner inward journey, you know, and um, to, to really understand and accept how blooming powerful we are and how capable of living that future, of living yeah. in kindness, integrity, and bravery, and and bringing others along with us, and you know, just I don't know. I mean, I just but the enter the castle because I've been really mesmerized for many many years and read and saw as much as I could about the English history, right? The Mary Queen of Scots mm -hmm. and yeah. Elizabeth, those two. Because what those two created with their, you know, in their time. And when I was sick, I went through the entire uh, series, of, just kept playing. I mean, I don't watch television, but I, my son showed me how to put Netflix on my iPad. And I laid in bed and kept pressing next episode, next episode, next episode. On which show? Rain, R-E-I-G-N. Oh, I'll watch it. Sounds great. 
Oh my God. I saw the ads. I haven't gotten around to it yet. I'll check that, it out. That one is, was amazing. And that was after about a year ago, someone suggested, and I went, did the same thing. Um, watch the Medici's. Oh yeah. That's a good women, one too. The women and watch what, you know, how all of this started. So, I, oh, so I think where I was going was you were talking about the Trinity and the divinity and all that kind of stuff. These two uh, series and then Carolyn Mice explain how it started, how it really started yeah. and the conditioning and the maneuvers and the corruption and the racketeering yeah. that took place, you know, way back then, which is what is going, Still going on. Come. Of course it is because yeah. we don't learn, but it's coming to an end. Yeah. It is. Well, because we're learning the hard way, which is yeah, watching the transit good. just destroy what doesn't fit anymore. And yeah. people aren't in charge of this. People think we're in charge. It's ludicrous. Only thing you're in right. charge of is your own decision making. That's it. Yes. We need to look at your chart in a moment here, but I have a few questions okay. for you before we do. When you were a little girl, what was your relationship to clothes? Because you're an amazing stylist. You've made me look gorgeous. I even said to you at the top of this call, I, I dress casual for this today because I knew you would be shining. And when the recording comes out, it just shows you on the screen when I'm not talking. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to be neutral because Bobby's going to be radiant. And what was it like when you were a little girl, when you encountered fashion? Well, I like to say that it was in the fabric of my life. Seriously. Explain, uncle, please. Explain. My, that's your purpose. I will, I will explain. My uncle Jack, who is, survived the Holocaust with numbers on his arm, I had been in, we were on the, the, my family from my father's side comes from Bialystok which was, they called it white Russia because on any given day of the week, it was either Poland or Russia. Right. Uh, so they, they called it white Russia. I don't know why, but they did. And um, my uncle Jack had a coat factory. Wow. So when he came to the United States through Ellis Island, as did my grandmother, my father's mother and the rest of the tantas, you know, and uncles, then they came through very traumatically as young children, their heads were shaved. Um, and my grandmother was that also- That was for, for lice, right? They wanted to prevent yeah, lice. Yeah, whatever they did it for. Whatever they said, it was for- Fear, humiliation. Yeah, whatever. mostly that, I'm sure. Yeah, so anyway- And then um, they sell the hair to make wigs. I, I bet it was a side business for the head- Oh, you know it was. They didn't throw that hair away. Anyway, go on. Yeah, so anyway, so when they oh. came, uh, they settled in Patterson, New Jersey- uh -huh. Which, by the way, which, by the way, was the silk capital of the United States. Wow, I didn't know that. It was. There were silk factories along the Patterson River. Wow. Which I live. I grew up in Fairland, which was the next town over. Right. So, and my grandfather, not related other than through marriage, my father's father was a Pattersonian. And my father was a Pattersonian. My mother came from Clifton and Passaic. So all that Northern Jersey. I know I've been there, been all there many there. times. Yeah. Passaic County and yeah. I grew up in Bergen County. Yeah. So, so my, my uncle, I remember clearly my uncle um, providing me snow jackets because we had snow jackets and one that I got, and his uh, former wife, Sonia, who was a beautiful woman, taught me how to hand stitch things. So um, I got a, when I was young, and my mother still polished the floors, before, I'm the oldest of four children, so it was before the rest of them, most of the rest of them came along. And we had those little braided rugs. And a couple of the neighbors, women neighbors, in the, were sitting at the dining room table, and I was giving a spin in my brand new, and this was probably 1955, so I was five years old, beautiful tweeted snow jacket, like something out of a 1940s movie, wow. fitted a little bit, but it had pink leather on the flaps of the pockets. Do you I mean, picture it, that anywhere? Probably not. My mother tried to destroy just about everything. So oh, you know, sorry. I, I retrieved my baby book, which is a, a story in and of itself. I bet from not from her from a warehouse in south jersey so god knows how i found it so anyway um that's a whole other story we'll have to have you back on the show oh yeah and that one's that one's documented because the oh woman, Bobby, it's really cool the woman who found it the woman who found it did a whole story on etsy no this is serious 
So it's not, and talked about manifesting. I wanted my baby book. My mother denied I even had one. I said, no, no, it's a moray cover and had a little wind up inside, you know, and it played Rockabye Baby. And she said, you never had an album. So I'm like, okay, fine. But anyway, so I came in, did a spin on one of the rugs and went down on my chin, cracking my chin open for the first time. And then there were two times after that, I cr cracked my chin. I have one of those scars too, from yeah. about that age. Yeah. Right. Never yeah. stitches. Lots of blood. Always, yeah. Always butterfly tape. Never stitches. Cause right. butterfly you know, tape. I was a polecat. You could not hold me down to give me stitches. <laughs> it wasn't happening. I know. I didn't get stitches either. No way. I don't yeah. think I did. No. So, <laughs> so really from a very young age, I, I had, um, I had a real affinity for quality and what felt good and what looked good, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's an affinity. And yeah. so, and then I was a dancer. So my mm -hmm. grandmother, now my uncle Jack's sister, uh, was an alterationist, the head alterationist in a store in Patterson, New Jersey, when Patterson was the it store, the it place called the Mart. And she made all of my costumes. So all my costumes were handmade beautifully and I had those to dance on stage in. So fast forward a little bit, I'm not much older and um, I wanted to start sewing and my mother had a singer sewing machine. She didn't use it, but I couldn't use it. So my father came up with a treadle sewing machine for me, no electricity in a beautiful wooden swing away door and you know bring the whole thing up so i started making little dirndl skirts remember dirndl skirts you pulled the waistline yep. so i started making little dirndl skirts for myself and my sister in the basement of our home in fairland wow. on a treadle sewing machine with no wow legs. that's so cool and then it just evolved and then i made suits and i made my own clothes because we were hand-me-down kids we yeah. didn't have a lot of money and we were hand-me-down kids. And um, there's probably a reason why my mother didn't care about dressing because, you know, whatever. But anyway, so we'd get, we'd get some really nice hand-me-downs because we had some wealthy cousins, you know, so we'd get some really nice hand-me-downs. And my next door neighbors were two girls and their, their family was wealthy too. So I'd get stuff from them. I used to salivate and wait for like, what am I going to get from them this time? You know, So great. It's so great. Yeah. And then I went, I remember I started, I don't know if I was in elementary school or junior high school, but it's probably elementary school. We had a wonderful woman named Beatrice Coleman, who was a shared cleaning lady and babysitter between myself and my dear friend Harvey, who lived across the street. And B, on, on Saturday nights when she'd babysit for us, taught me how to iron. So One I, of the things I really hate doing. Yeah, but I would iron pillowcases. Yeah, that's okay. Good. You yeah, can so iron mine because they're really wrinkled. I don't anymore. Oh, good. There's people for that. I don't want to iron pillowcases. No. I recently, <laughs> I recently go made on. Yes, go on. I recently made a couple of suitcases, though, because my sewing machine comes out every once in a while. I recently made I'm a sure couple, it does. Couple Very creative. Things, and I made them with, I don't know if they're English or French, but they have a flap inside. Yeah. And I put lace trim across it, you know. Nice, and nice. how did I do it? I set my sewing machine up, up on the table and a YouTube up over there. And I kept pausing the YouTube to cut it and put it together. So anyway, I, I digress. So, um, so clothing, so B taught me how to, how to iron. So what I would do is I would iron my clothes. I'd use spray starch on the shirts because we yeah. were still wearing button down shirts and that kind of stuff. And I would iron everything and I would arrange my outfits for the entire week of school to come wow. in the closet. Wow. It's awesome. And, uh, yeah. So, um, so it, it just seems to, it just seems to have always been natural born instinct for me. And yeah. my, my parents were in the, the auction business, you know, that's a long story, but anyway, there's a lot of stuff in our house all the time. I mean, it grew for them into hoarding full on, full on hoarding, terrible, but when they would bring a load of jewelry and they put it on the table and they'd say, they call me Barbara. They said, let Barbara look through it because somehow or other I could see I could see a table. You could find floor. the gems. I found literally I, found, I could find the platinum. Yeah, of course, because it has a frequency and you can yeah, feel I, it I and you can see it. 
Yes, I found the good things. So, um, so it just seemed to just keep evolving. And Aww. I could find things on sale and I could find new stores. I kind of sniffed them out. Yeah, it's like such Bolton. a great story. Yeah, when Bolton's first started, you know, it really was a designer sample store. And then right. it grew into something else. But somehow or other, I was in like the second week they were open. And that kind of stuff still continues to this day. Right, and right. when I when I go through people's closets, you know, I find the gems there too. I'm like, even if we're on Zoom to somebody in Australia, yeah, right? Of oh, course, that one. No, that one. Up right, there. that one. That one. That one. Yeah. So great. So, so great. Does that answer your question? I Wonderfully. Know. We have about have four not, minutes left, so I, I want to look been at down your that chart. Lane in a long time. So. It's, to me, people's actual story of their life does far more to enroll people in the consciousness of what you're trying to create than me reading your bio, right? Yeah. Or going over your program. Like everyone listening to this can read energy, you know? So it's the energy you bring in. You look, you got the angel <laughs> over you. So I'm going to bring up your Black chart. Light. So we're going into the home stretch here. We get about three minutes, but I want to talk about something in your chart called the incarnation cross. Now you are the right angle cross of explanation which you just demonstrated, which is that I can ask you just about any question and you can just pull out a story from either your experience, a made up story, a client story, whatever. You've got the stories. Now, look at this design. You've got this incredible channel here connecting the head crown down to the neocortex. So it's connected. And then your neocortex is connected right down to your throat through the genius channel. And as I was listening to you, I was like, she must have the genius channel. Of course she does right over here in her design earth. Same place I have it. We both have it. Just different lines. I'm line one, research and solitude. You're line six. You're line six. So the genius channel is the, is the 43, 23, right? So you got 43 in design earth, 23 in design sun, and then personality sun is line is sorry gate four and personality earth is gate 49 so the personality sun and earth the design sun and earth that's what makes up someone's incarnation cross the first number to the left of the decimal is the gate the number after is the line so your profile is a four because you get a four here four here six four dash six right and then your your right angle cross of explanation four forty nine twenty three forty three so the four forty nine gate the four and the forty nine are what you give to the other. So what gate four line four says is, let's build a community where we're willing to be fools and go in a new direction, go in a new direction. Yeah, because this is the energy of abstraction. So it's like learning from the past to bring that information forward into the future. So you, when you tell stories, especially about the past, it's very relevant to now. So that's the first piece. The 49.4 is you need to make sure, you need to make sure that everyone in the community has what they need, especially food, because that stops a violent revolution. Gate 49 is the gate of revolution. This is no joke. These energies in our charts are real. And now you're seeing it in the world. So your, your deepest, you know, deepest uh, uh, healing transformation for you is creating community to prevent bloody revolution. So fundraising, like for, like I mentioned to you, because the four energy is charity. So being involved with charities that help refugees, really good use of your energy and actually bumps your career even higher, gets your exposure even higher when you're in a charity helping role. It's just, you're all here for charity and philanthropy. You are, you know, you're, you know, it's not about money for you. It's not it, like you make money, but it's, it's like all the money comes, the bigger mission. Yeah, and then on the design side, you got 2343. It's a genius channel. What keeps you healthy is explaining things from a line six systems approach. It's up on the roof. You're like you're up on the, the mount and you're sharing how the system works. It's the frequency of light. And so you're showing people, you're shining. Look at the light over your head, shining the light on the situation, explaining what it is so we can navigate navigate a chaos, right? Navigate it with kindness, bravery, and integrity. Trinity, right? That triangle. You're here to explain what that means. And you have many, your whole chart is about different ways to explain things. Some of times it's story, sometimes it's structural, sometimes it's how to, 
Sometimes it's deep research. You're a really good researcher. A lot of research in this chart. Yeah. Really good leader. And essentially, you're here to be famous for helping people live the abundance of their own spirit and show up dressed and feeling and speaking as their true self. So that's what I see about your life purpose. Yeah. Yes. And no argument. No, no argument. Well, it's your design. You picked it. Yeah. I'm just and reading it. And it's funny because I think I, you remember when, when we first met and I didn't know very much about this, that I said as a child, when I saw the movie that Haley Mills was in Pollyanna and she was helping the older man see things in a different light by the crystal hanging in the window that I knew that I wanted to walk through my life being Pollyanna. Yeah, well, that's who you are. Helping people get their needs met. Florence Nightingale, baby, in, in Prada shoes. I love it. All right, I we got to finish here, everyone. What's that? I don't have any Prada shoes yet. Go I buy some today. Go get some. <laughs> Go ask. If Florence Nightingale hung out with Coco <laughs> Chanel and you, what would she wear to the party? I bet it wouldn't be her nursing uniform. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you so much. This has been another amazing episode of Align to Your Design. We'll definitely have Bobby back. Thank you all so much and tune in next time. Bye for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Align to Your Design. If you did, please grab my free report, Business by Design, at yourpurpose.com and then join our Facebook group, Align to Your Design. See you next time.